If you haven't tried Japanese curry before, you're missing out. It's one of the most popular Japanese dishes and it comes in three forms. Curry rice, curry udon and curry bread. Curry served with rice is the most popular type of curry in Japan and Japanese curry is a lot milder than Indian curry, so it's great for beginners. Together with the sauce, a wide variety of ingredients including veggies and meats are used to prepare Japanese curry. Let's make a delicious Japanese beef curry today and I also have a few other curry recipes in our blog post, I'll link to it in the description. Now this hearty and savory Japanese beef curry is made with beef, potatoes, carrots, curry roux and mushrooms and it makes an amazing introduction for those new to curry. It's adapted to Japanese taste which makes it milder and sweeter with a stew like texture. Now you need 3 medium onions, 3 carrots, run russet potato, 8 mushrooms, 30 ounces of lean stew meat, kosher or sea salt to taste, 2 tablespoons of all purpose flour, 2 tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, 2 cloves of garlic minced, 1 inch of ginger grated, 1 tablespoon of curry powder, 2 tablespoons of tomato paste, 1 cup of red wine, 8 cups of beef stock, 2 bay leaves, 1 box of Japanese curry roux, 1 tablespoon of Worcester sauce, a quarter apple and some red pickled daikon to serve, although that's optional. Now gather all of your ingredients. Cut your onion into thin slices and then cut your carrot diagonally as you rotate it in a quarter in between the cuts. This cutting technique is called rangiri in Japanese. Cut your potato in half and then cut both pieces into quarters. Soak in water for around 15 minutes so that you can remove the starch. Clean the mushrooms, you can use a pastry brush to do so. Avoid washing them as they can absorb moisture, but you can give them a quick rinse. Once done, cut them into thin slices. Then slice your beef into one and a half inch cubes and then sprinkle pepper and salt on them. And apply a light coat of flour to the meat. Now to cook the curry, using a skillet, heat one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of oil on high heat. Add the beef cubes, but don't crowd the skillet to avoid steaming the beef. Therefore you should make sure that you cook in small batches. Make sure that the beef is cooked on both sides and until brown. This should take around 10 to 15 minutes. If you choose to cook in small batches, transfer the cooked beef to a side plate and then work on the other batch. Next, use a large heavy bottom pot. Heat 1 tablespoon of butter on medium heat and then add the onion. Next, add 1 tablespoon of olive oil and stir well. Add 1 tablespoon of salt after 10 minutes and then saute the onion until translucent and tender. This should take around 20 to 25 minutes. If you have plenty of time, you can spend more time until the onions are caramelized. This should take to around 40 minutes. Now you can add the ginger, garlic, tomato paste and curry powder and then saute it for around 2 minutes. Add the beef and wine and allow the alcohol to evaporate. This will take around 5 minutes. Add your veggies and then pour the beef broth until the veggies are covered. You don't have to use all of the broth, but the veggies should be fully covered. Now cover the pot with a lid and then allow it to boil. As it continues to boil, skim off the fat and scum from the soup. Next add the bay leaf and then cover the pot using the lid, but leave it slightly ajar. And now simmer until your veggies are tender. This should take around 20 minutes. As you continue to cook, skim the broth so that you can clean the surface of the broth. You can now add the remaining broth or water if needed. When all the ingredients are tender, add the curry roux. Turn off the stove, allow the curry roux to dissolve completely inside the ladle and then release it to the broth. This will ensure that the undissolved roux will not get into the broth. When you feel that the curry is very thick for your taste, you can add some water to dilute it. Now you can start to cook using low heat and stir regularly, be careful to avoid burning the curry. Add the Worcester sauce and grate the apple to add some sweetness. Simmer while uncovered and on low heat and stir occasionally, until the curry gets the consistency that you need. For serving use Japanese rice with fukunjizuki, that's pickled vegetables and add some daikon if you like it and you have it, but those are optional. Now the common ingredients used in Japanese curry include carrots, potatoes, meat and onions. The curry sauce is mostly prepared from curry powder roux, which is usually a blend of Indian spices. However, Japanese curry is usually thicker in texture and less spicy compared to Indian curry. In general, the Japanese use fewer spices to make curry, thus the flavor is not as strong and vibrant. It's described as an understated umami. Now Japanese curry generally doesn't contain milk. You're probably thinking of Thai curry which contains coconut milk and the Japanese curry recipe rarely uses milk. 
Curry roux is the base of the dish. It's a mixture of sauce that's made from fat, flour and spices. And usually you will find the curry roux at the supermarket pre-made in cube format. You find tons of varieties in Asian supermarkets. These curry cubes will make your life easier as they contain all the spices and flavors for the curry. You can find them in all kinds of flavors and spiciness levels, but the Japanese ones will tend to be not as spicy. I hope you all enjoyed this recipe and check out these videos we have for you as well.